Hi, One Ho family. This is today's lunchtime devotional. This is a special fasting and prayer edition. I want to mention to you and speak to you about our One Hope Unity in Prayer fasting prayer points that we're using. And I hope you're praying every day and fasting one meal or whatever you can fast to pray together and to see God continue to move and to move greater in greater and greater ways. As I put these prayer points together uh, a good number of weeks ago, I, I did pray and I asked God to lead me as I was putting these prayer points together. And I'm looking at them here. There's seven prayer points. And I put them together, but there's something I did not see to begin with with these prayer points that God has revealed to me that He put them together in this order for a specific reason. So the first prayer point is pray for decisiveness. And so as I pray, uh, we're praying for people to make a decision to follow the Lord, but I'm also praying and I felt like the Lord led me and is leading me to pray for decisiveness for our church body. That we, every one of us, me, you, all of us, that we would pray that, that God would help us to be decisive. That we wouldn't be like, oh, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. That God would just give us direction. We'd be decisive about following him, about being involved in the church, about praying when there's a time of fasting and praying, about seeking God, about coming to every service that we can get to, about giving of our tithes and offerings. We'd be decisive about all of these things and seeking him with all of our hearts. And, uh, and, and it goes with Joshua 24, 15, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Then it flows into praying for a hunger and thirst for God. First of all, we have to make a decision to follow Jesus no matter what, to do what he's called us to do no matter what. Then we begin to have a hunger and thirst. You, you don't have that hunger and thirst for God, which is a second prayer point, unless you've made a decision, Lord, I'm all in with you. So then we pray for a hunger and thirst. God, God, make us hungry. Lord, make us hungry and thirsty for you. I want more of you in my life. God, I'm seeking you. And, and, and that, that hunger and thirst increases. And in the scripture that we used here, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. And whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty again. And so we decide to follow Jesus with all of our hearts. And then we begin to pray for a hunger and thirst and God begins to fulfill that because we've decided to do what he's called us to do. The third point is pray for unity. Now, now that we're decided to follow the Lord, now that we're praying God give us a hunger and thirst and we're beginning to have that hunger and thirst for him, then I'm praying God give it to all of us, not just a few, not just leaders, not just ministry team leaders, elders, pastors, whoever it may be, all of us. God, help us all to seek you with all of our hearts. Just like uh, in the upper room uh, in the book of Acts, they were in one place, in one accord. They were in unity and the spirit of God fell in power. And so that's what the Lord wants for us. So he wants us to be decisive to follow him. He wants us to pray for a hunger and thirst and, and stirring that up in us. And then thirdly, uh, unity. We need to be in unity and not let anything separate us from him, his word, or one another. Then fourth, praying for the power of the Spirit. When they were in that upper room, praying in unity, the power of the Holy Spirit of God fell and it filled every single one of them. Do you, did you ever read that and notice that nobody of the 120 were missed when the Spirit of God fell? And so, and then again, they were in Acts chapter 4 and verse 31. It's one of, it's our scripture for this prayer point. It says, after this prayer, they prayed and asked God for boldness. It said, the meeting place where they were shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, they had been filled before, but God filled them again. And then they went out and proclaimed the word of God, the gospel with boldness. And so, so we're, we're seeing a, a, um, a, a pattern here. We're seeing a, 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 a line that God is following with us. Decisiveness, then a hunger and thirst is created. Then all of us in unity seeking God. They were in one place, one accord. The, the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And then we pray, number five, for the presence of God. 
now, God, we don't want you, we don't want to go anywhere without your presence. Uh, it's just like Moses. This is our scripture, Exodus 33, 14, for this prayer point. Uh, we're praying for the presence of God to fill one hope not just for a visitation, but for a habitation. We want him to live there. We want him to live in us and on us and every time we come together. And uh, the Lord, uh, uh, Moses asked the Lord, said, don't send us up from here unless your presence goes with us. We don't want to go anywhere as a church, as one hope, unless the presence of God goes with us. And so we pray for that presence of God. Now that, we've, now that we have prayed and made a decision, now that we've prayed for a hunger and thirst and God's stirring that up, now let's unit, in unity all of us do that. Uh, then the Holy Spirit of God. Pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit even again in our lives. Then we pray, Lord, don't send us somewhere without the, your presence. And, and, uh, and, and God said, I'll go with you. Then number six, we pray for God's abundant provision. We need his provision in our life. We need we need people. We need more people, more leaders to reach more families, to reach more children, to take advantage of those modulars that we have in the space that God has created for us. Oh, can't you see what God's doing here? Pray for abundant provision for people, for for the power of God to move among us and for the provision for the vision for the finances of the church to be where they need to be so that we can do everything that God has called us to do. I love this scripture we have for this point. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. There's a lot of alls and everys in that verse. And so, so then we come all the way down uh, to that point, abundant provision. And then what's the result of that? Number seven prayer point, we're going to pray for people to come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. It's just like in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. It says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to prayer, uh, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, all of these things. And what was the result? Verse 40 said, 47 says, and God added to the church daily those who were being saved. That's the outcome. Number seven, the last prayer point, God, give us souls. Give us souls. Pray that, that God would, would bring people into the kingdom through one hope, through you, through me, through the church. And so everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I just see a pattern that God had given me when I put these prayer points together that I didn't see when I first put them together and that God gave. It's all him. It's because he did it. And so I hope this encourages you to continue through the, to seek God, to see him do only what he can do. I am so excited about what God has in store for us as we move forward with him.